Hello, and welcome to another edition of End to Asks. Today, we have Shannon Mayer, who is the founder of Creative Impact Consulting. She is a leadership coach and human resources consultant and comes with 20 years of experience working with leaders in various HR roles in the Calgary marketplace. As a coach, she works with mid-level leaders to help them improve their leadership effectiveness and team performance through better conversations. And as a human resource consultant, she partners with small businesses to audit, design, and deliver sound people programs. Welcome, Shannon. Hello, Caitlin and Adam, thank you. Welcome, Shannon, thanks for joining us. Tell us about Creative Impact Consulting. How'd you come up with that name? Oh my gosh, that's an interesting topic. Um, you know, I, have to, I, I think back when I was creating the name and it was really on the tail end of a full-time career in the oil field service sector. And if anybody knows that sector is extremely challenging, it's exciting. I love my many years working in that sector, but seasonally, certainly with oil field booms and busts, you know, you had to be creative and you had to really think on your feet and be quite agile when you're working to, you know, make sure that your workforce is taken care of and that, you know, you provide the right people and competitive people programs so that your business can be viable. And I like to think that that's a creative aspect. And then when I went out on my own and developed my own company in 2012, I thought, well, you know, if, as a consultant, I wanted to make an impact. This is what we want to do. We want to do good work and make a difference for our clients. And being that I think, hopefully, I believe that it was a creative lifestyle that I lived working in oil field service that that just led to that name, Creative Impact. Excellent. Fantastic. I love that. So Shannon, I wanted to ask you, you know, with COVID, we were forced to work from home and now companies are starting to go back to work and many are choosing to have kind of a mixed, some in the office, some at home or much at home. So some of the concerns we, we've heard from, from our, our clients and people online is how do leaders maintain high performance and accountable teams while working remotely? Hmm. That's a really great question. As it seems that that there's a lot that has gone on for change. Um, people are experiencing such a dramatic shift in the way that they work. Um, credit to organizations that on one day, on a Friday, they determined everybody was going to be remote. To Monday, they were able to turn on a computer and actually start doing work. I mean, I'll give credit to the technology and, and the systems that companies have in place, but um, leaders are, are perplexed by that. How do you, you know, maintain performance and measure productivity and performance. And, um, you know, there's a few things that's going on with that. My message is that if you have this, the criteria for performance, you've set expectations, high performers know what is clearly expected of them, they know how to, you know, deliver and do their work, and you've trusted in their ability to do that, the message is that it doesn't matter. Remote, in the office or working abroad, the construct is still the same. Measuring performance is the same. What has shifted though is the situation. And a lot of leaders I find are getting caught up in that, that it's way different, that performance and productivity are different. Yes, they are definitely impacted. And certainly, um, you know, there's some uh, expectations to be shifted, but without lowering the bar. Yeah, I like that. Shift the expectations, but don't lower the bar. That's very well said, Shannon. So, so tell me a little bit then about how we do exactly that. How do we shift our expectations? What do we have to do? Mm, that's a great question. So ultimately, our people are experiencing a very different environment working from home. You know, you know I don't have to speak to the challenges uh, that some people are, you know, managing families in a different way of working. And, and some people are thriving. They, they realize, wow, this working from home, I wish I could have been doing this before. And they just seem to have the structure that's set up and they feel more productive. Uh, you know, many, I talk to many people and say, you know what, I'm fine. I'm getting more work done. I'm less interrupted. My work requires a lot of, you know, quiet thought. And I get that at home versus the office. Other people thrive in the office. You know, they really feel that that's their, their place to be. And quite frankly, it is easier to communicate with others. You can collaborate with your teams when you're in the office. But, you know, as leaders though, and as teams, we need to foster the right interactions that allow us to still continue to do 
that work. So as leaders, it's really important to understand what is going on with your people. And this is where you hear a lot about, you know, the caring environment and the empathetic leader. But it's really important to understand, you know, are all the systems in place for them to still deliver the work that they used to do so well? So to do that is to make sure you're in those, con those conversations. And they're really more connection conversations because it can be a little different for people these days. You might not have ever had to have that, how are you doing? How is everything going for you kind of conversation? from a caring place previous to this situation. Right. That's really interesting you brought up yeah. systems, Shannon. I mean, back to your original message is it doesn't matter. So it's easy when we're in the office and we've been doing things a certain way, much of our system or process could be informal or maybe there's workarounds or, or areas that um, aren't as robust as we think. So now our perspective is shifted. Our way of doing things is shifted. If the system was robust to start with, it shouldn't matter. It's just our way of interfacing with it that has changed. However, um, maybe this now highlights areas where we need to improve. Um, maybe yeah. little red flags start to go up that uh, it is an opportunity to address these things, right? Yeah, absolutely, Adam. Remote working is not new. People have been remote working in many different industries and environments for a long time. And a lot, and there's leaders who've been managing remote teams globally for years. So that's not to say though that this situation isn't unique and different. It's just new for many. We haven't had to do that. The traditional work environment is that we're a team in the office and we might work from home once in a while, but generally speaking, this is what's really different. But exactly right, the systems, the performance management criteria and systems. You know, when I look at it from maintaining high performance, do people know what's expected of them? Do they really know what a good job looks like and what is expected to deliver? And do they have the skills and experience to deliver the work that's expected of them? And do they have the right tools, information, and systems that allow them to do good work? And, you know, then do they foster the right interactions? That's where it's getting really interesting right now with teams they just are so used to those informal flybys in the office and they learned a lot and solved a lot of problems and quick questions by just that water cooler interaction. That's what's really missing right now. So the systems um, to have the informal chitter and chatter is where it is a little bit difficult. But from performance management, that, that should be sound. And if you have those in place, then you should be able to manage the performance and productivity by the results by the results and the quality of work that's being produced. Excellent. So, so do you have any tips or tricks on how to like get that water cooler flyby talk? Is there anything that we can do with remote teams? Mm, that's the tricky one. I know that um, companies are doing a pretty good job using, you know, the slacks and, you know, texting and those different functions, but it's thinking about what are those team norms? You know, what are some of the team norms that leaders can always be encouraging their teams to do? What was the interaction before? How did they interact? Yes, the flybys are very, it's difficult now, but what was the um, frequency? How often could you reach out? What does that look like to still connect with, you know, teammates, other, you know, colleagues where you did have the flyby? And what would you do that? And when would you do that? There's a few things. I mean, some people, some leaders leave their Zoom on for three hours and just say, for anybody who wants to pop in, they need me. This is my open door policy. It's my open <laughs> Zoom, you know? Right. And, That's a good one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, and it works. If people need me, my door is open. Just pop mm. in. That's how it works. Um, you know, so there's that. And, um, and just, you know, using the technology that's, you know, that has been placed, whether it's a Slack or texting or whatever. And, but find the right, um, the cadence and the time to do it. Because what a lot of people are finding is they're having to book a meeting to do that. Now it's death by meetings double what used to be. Right? Yeah. You have to book the meeting for the informal. Well, no, you know. Try to set up a system where it's still informal. You know, what's the quick question? What would be the time when you want to respond to that quick question? How was it before? What was the norm? How did that work? What was the, what was the, um, 
a kind of interaction. So trying to emulate that. But it is a little trickier, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I find it really interesting. Um, you know, we don't have the water cooler flyby talk, but then in other ways, you know, you get to see inside people's homes and then maybe it's messy behind them or there's a familiar yeah. book or a kid comes <laughs> running in or yeah. the doorbell rings or you know, something happens, right? Yeah. So in a way, we're more exposed and, and raw more than we've ever been. So it's kind of like under a closed, but another open in, in maybe a slightly different, more intimate way. So, you know, as a leader, um, sometimes I think it's difficult to play with that vulnerability piece so that uncomfortability with that then maybe translates into things like well i need to know what you're doing all day right um versus hey guys i'm this is kind of crazy for me i'm, I'm going to trust you guys but I, I just need you to help me out can we check in more often can blah 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 whatever right yep yep communication is super important right now Mm -hmm. And it is about what are those team norms? How are we going to communicate? But from a leadership perspective, you know, I have been talking a lot about trust. You know, give the trust, manage the trust. And, you know, that's where it will be really super important. You cannot look over people's shoulder. You shouldn't have been in the office anyways, because that's just not, generally people like their autonomy and as leaders, they don't want to do that. And I don't think that that's the norm. But I'm sure in some situations that is, but you know, it's about giving the trust. And if you want to be able to trust people, you have to give it first. So, you know, back to setting their expectations is a good job. Look like, how are we going to communicate? What is this interaction as a team that's really going to work for us in this unique environment, recognizing that it's different and offering, you know, an open dialogue more than maybe before and you said the word vulnerability which i think is a really important factor because as leaders you know we might want to be checking in with our people but also saying you know what this is kind of weird for me but here's what i've been trying to do to you know keep focused try to cancel the noise and the distractions because there are some for most people so you know it's about also being being very um you know humble in your experience because you're dealing with it too no question and I love the fact you brought up about now that we get to see into people's homes and their real lives. I think that's going to strengthen relationships because, you know, the kids and the pets and the, and the backgrounds and, you know, all of that is who we are as people and what our real lives are all about. And I think from a coworker perspective and from a leadership perspective, I think it's, I think it's going to bolster some relationships more than before. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. I like that. Now, tell me, when you talk about, like, managing expectations and performance what about those companies who are all about hourly utilization um you know time and material sort of working and and working remotely now how do we measure those kind of performance or do we have to change our expectations there yeah i think we do have to change our expectations there because we don't clock in and see people coming in at eight and we don't see them clocking out at five and you know i think Remote working typically has been project oriented. It's not about the hours in the day, but what you're producing and what the end result is. And I believe that fully. And I think, you know, in this situation, it is about shifting those expectations because it's not necessarily eight to five anymore. Somebody may need to adjust their work day, but they also might have to work at five in the morning, which nobody's ever had to do before, or, you know, five to seven at night because they had some juggling to do with family. And, you know, I think from a leadership perspective, at least you know that. So you know that it might not necessarily be that perfect eight or nine hour workday, but it's a project. Is this work getting completed the way that you've always needed it to be, the timeline that you've needed it to be, but not getting fussed about the hours because that's not realistic right now. What's realistic right now is that the work is being completed and you're giving the autonomy of the way of getting it done through the employee. So they know that they can feel trusted to deliver what they need to. Yeah. That's, that's really fantastic and, and insightful. I love the, the concept of Nothing needs to change, just your perspective has changed. You know, I was here, now I'm over here. 
So how you perceive what you should or should not do, that's the only thing that's really changed. And if we recognize that, yeah. then we can begin to change in our own minds how, how we behave and how we interact. Um, yeah. I think that's really fantastic. Thank you so much. Yeah. This situation is going to go on for a while. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people talking that their reentry plans into the workplace is going to be phased over time. It's not even going to start being considered till September, October. Many of my clients, their organizations have just said 2021. You know, they're, they're going to be remote working for a longer period of time. So, you know, we just don't shut down work in that period of time. Organizations are still needing to move forward. And if the corporate direction hasn't changed, and the corporate, you know, the vision and the deliverables haven't changed, then we need to find a way to manage accordingly. And certainly, um, you know, not expecting productivity to dip that much is very realistic. Yeah. Absolutely, for sure. Well, thank you so much for those wonderful tips, Shannon. Is there any last points you wanna share with us before we wrap up? No final tips in summary, just, conversation and connection, reprioritize, you know, consider the expectations, the deliverables, give the trust, manage the trust, and think about it more from a productivity perspective than an hourly perspective. Yeah. Excellent. Well, thank, thank you, you so, so much for your time, Shannon. We really oh, thank you it. so much. Take care. Thanks, guys. Bye.